Um, thank you. Minister, before I talk about the substance of the bill, um, the direction of which I agree with and welcome, can I just make a point on the procedure this week? The bill, we didn't get access to the bill and to the digest on the bill until earlier this week. And my understanding is that the bill has been guillotined today. Now, this sort of thing, as uh, you know, is very, very important legislation, very important to a lot of the SMEs around the country. Um, it's very difficult, obviously, for me and for other deputies to input in any meaningful way, given, that, given those sort of timelines. So I'd just like to bring that to your attention. Um, now, the focus of the government uh, now and the previous government, a lot of the time, the focus of the media a lot of the time is on foreign direct investment and on multinationals. We hear it, we hear it a lot. They're very welcome. They bring a lot of jobs. They bring a lot of money. They bring a lot of expertise. And what we don't see so much, and we don't hear so much about, is a focus on the SME sector. But of course, we know that 55% of jobs in Ireland come from the SME sector. And interestingly, in the UK, it's around 60%, and in Germany, uh, I believe it's around 70%, which suggests not only do over half of the Irish workers work in the SME sector, but there's huge potential to grow this sector. Um, so I welcome the government's focus on it. Um, there is an issue around not just focusing on the SME sector, but ensuring that the resources of the state don't just focus on exports. A lot of deputies in the House will have, will have had similar stories. I've had many business people in Wicklow come to me and say, I have a great idea. I've gone to the County Enterprise Board. I've gone to Enterprise Ireland. But it's not an export-oriented job, or it's not an export-oriented idea. And the County Enterprise Boards and Enterprise Ireland say, sorry, that's just, it's not within our terms of reference. We're not able to help you. Now, from an economic perspective, anything that addresses import substitution is just as important as anything that is export-based. So, for example, if in Wicklow or in somewhere else, someone can set up a company that manufactures a product that we can buy domestically rather than something we have to buy in from abroad. An example might be biofuels, for example using rapeseed oil and so forth. Import substitution from an economic perspective in terms of balancing our, our, our trade balance uh, is just as important as exports. But for some reason, and it's a legacy reason, it's certainly something that this government didn't bring in, but certainly seems to have continued from, from previous governments, we have state agencies that will explicitly say to people, if you're involved in import substitution rather than exports, the conversation is over. So, so I hope I couldn't see in the Bill's Digest anything that addressed this. So I would urge the government to take a look at this and make sure that these loans are not just ring-fenced for high-tech export-oriented companies. Economically, there's a lot of benefit from imp import substitution as well. Um, the SMEs obviously are struggling. Um, we know that the rates, the council rates are not falling. There's one or two noticeable exceptions, but by and large, uh, in a time of economic crisis, the council rates are not falling. Now, the councils give good reason for that. The government is pulling away central funding. The council still needs to provide service. But the people who are being made pay for these is the SMEs. Very, very difficult in the current economic climate and trading environment. Many of them have come to, come to me and said, we've cut our costs. We're as lean as we can possibly be. I'm paying myself minimum wage. I'm trying to keep people at work. But I am competing with people across the border and, 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 and in Britain who are, over the last few years, 30% more competitive than I am for doing nothing. There's no way I can compete with that. So the SME sector in Ireland is obviously struggling in a hugely, hugely difficult trading and currency, envir currency environment. Now, I said I welcome the principle of this bill, and I really do. Um, there are mixed messages, as we know, coming from the banks, coming from Minister Noonan, coming from the SME sector itself, as to whether or not there is sufficient lending happening. We've had recent research from the Central Bank of Ireland which suggests that there is a market failure, which, which suggests that Irish firms, consciously or su subconsciously by the banks, are not being lent when it is reasonable and correct and prudent to lend to them. Um, we are hearing other things. We addressed this with Minister Noon in the Finance Committee some, some time ago. He referred us to the credit review body and the fact that only 44 claims had been made by companies saying the banks are not treating us fairly, using this as evidence that, in fact, there wasn't this great, great unmet demand, that they weren't being, met, that they weren't being uh, treated unfairly. Um, 
I've taken a look at the evidence on both sides. It would seem to me, particularly backed up by the recent central bank research, that there is a prejudice and the viable SMEs in Ireland really are not. Of course some of them are, but a lot of them really are not getting the money and that the counter-argument of the credit review body has only had 44 claims doesn't seem to stack up. I don't know why they haven't had more claims. Maybe more SMEs don't know about it. But on balance, it does seem that we are dealing with a market failure, in which case this type of micro-enterprise fund makes a lot of sense, and I welcome the principle of it. However, the fund is entirely inadequate. I've taken a look at the numbers, and it feels to me like we're trying to inflate a massive bouncy castle with a bicycle pump. The original fund is going to be 10 million. They're looking to borrow another 25 million. And then over a 10 year period, the objective is to lend 9 million euros a year. So over a 10 year period, 90 million euros. And let's, that, let's just put that into perspective of what's happened this week. This week, we've paid 1.1 billion euros to unguaranteed, unsecured bondholders. Now, the interest on that in perpetuity will be about 40 million euros a year. So let's just put these two things in context. On the one hand, we're creating a fund for struggling SMEs, which are vital to the economic recovery and social recovery of this country. And we're saying over a 10-year period, we're hoping to lend you 90 million euros. In the same week, over that same year period, we have done something which is incurring a 400 million euro cost, which is just servicing the interest on 1.1 billion euros. So I understand that the Minister and, and, and Minister Boone would, would like to be putting 10 times this amount in, of course. Um, I would urge the Minister to go back to Cabinet and go back to the government and start making these comparisons and saying, you can't possibly solve this market failure with 90 million euros. It's, it's just totally inadequate. So. What is needed? Can I suggest a range of policy issues which, which the government could, could look at? First of all, as I've said, please take a good look at import substitution. Not just for this fund, but in terms of the terms of reference for the County Enterprise Board and the terms of reference for Enterprise Ireland. We are missing a huge, huge opportunity here. And the County Enterprise Board Boards and Enterprise Ireland, in fairness to them, can't do it. It's, it. They are explicitly disallowed from doing it based on their terms of reference. A very, very simple change could be made in, in a number of weeks and I think would be very, very useful in terms of economic growth, stimulating new ideas, getting entrepreneurs to start thinking in new areas, not just exports, import substitution. We need an infrastructure around the SMEs. We need innovation hubs, we need very serious mentoring, we need very serious training. I know the county enterprise boards in Enterprise Ireland do some of this. I would put it to the minister that we need a lot more. There's a huge opportunity in towns around, around the country um, to have innovation hubs, to bring 10, 20, 30 of these entrepreneurs and their small companies together, get them using shared facilities and get them exchanging ideas with each other. We know that this works very well um, in other countries. For the fund itself, I would say we need far, far more money. We need 10 times the money, 20 times the money. Again, I appreciate that we live in very, very difficult financial times. But if we step back and say strategically, does it make sense to incur 400 million euros in interest payments on money we don't owe, but we're paying, and just 90 million to try and deal with this market failure, which is a lack of lending to entrepreneurs in Ireland. Doesn't seem right. Seems like our priorities are wrong. If it was the other way around, maybe, maybe that'd be better. Um, these type of SMEs do need relief on corporate rates. It's killing them. They start up their business and they get hit immediately from the council with a very large bill that they simply, they simply can't pay. So uh, I would love if the minister and the government would look at some form of, of council rate relief for the SME sector. While they, while they need it, while they're in startup. Um, two final issues. One is a separation of property debt. We have a situation where viable SMEs all over the country during the bubble may have invested in an apartment or in a piece of property in the town or wherever. That single investment is killing the SME and putting people, putting people out of business. It should be possible for us to create a legislative mechanism and financing that says we are going to separate these two debts. If you have a viable business and you in your town are employing between two and ten people and therefore you're within the remit of this fund, 
but you've got some apartment, the mortgage on which is going to ultimately put those 10 people out of work, we can and we should intervene, split those out and figure out a way to protect the jobs and protect the enterprise. Thank you, Deputy. And then finally, Minister, thank you, last Ken Corla. Fi finally, Minister, this is an issue that was raised explicitly by the, the Small Firms Association in their press release welcoming this initiative. Uh, and it was very noticeable that this was the only other thing they said. And it is proper social welfare protection for, for the self-employed. We cannot turn around to potential entrepreneurs in this country and say, we want you to take a risk. We need you to take a risk. We need you to create these jobs. We will help you with a small amount of funding. But if you get it wrong, you get nothing. At the moment, as you know, Minister, the social welfare payments for the self-employed who lose their jobs are means tested. Now, critically, and here's something that we changed in the morning, critically, mortgage payments don't count. So if the household has 2,000 euros coming in, and they're paying 1,500 in their mortgage payments. In real terms, they've got 500 euros. They need the help. They need the social welfare blanket. But the means test doesn't do that. It says you've got 2,000, therefore you're getting nothing. So there are five or six issues that I would love the two ministers, hello minister, to take away and, uh, and uh, have, a, have a think about. Thank I think this is a start, um, but I think we've got to go much, much further. Thank you.